Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to concentrate on practical aspect. This video, I'm going to show you to you step by step how can we actually perform conducted emission test and management. Okay, so basically, under this conducted emission, we have CISPR 11, okay, which I'm going to demo on this video how to perform conducted emission based on CISPR 11 standard. Okay, under this conducted emission, we also have CISPR 22 and also FCC standard. However, all these tests are all quite similar, okay, except the frequency range to test is slightly different. Okay, so basically, in short, okay, so basically, this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 59 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, I strongly urge you guys to ask me your question through the comment. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. And those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's take a look. How can we actually perform conducted emission test and measurement? Okay, before we go into the practical aspect of conducted emission, okay, so over here you can see that there are actually two sets of listen. On your left, this listen is mainly used for single phase power supply. On your right, this listen is mainly used for three phase power supply. For example, when your device is required to power up by a single phase, then you will use this listen. While your device is required to be powered up by three phase, then you will use this listen to power your DUT. Over here, you can see that basically this part here, okay, basically is to where the power source to power up your DUT. But over here, this is basically the power source to power up your three-phase DUT. For listen, you can see on the other side, you can see that there are a variety of switch here. So in short, okay, basically you need to switch between light and neutral. And over here, you can see that this port here is where we connect to spectrum analyzer. Okay, let's take a look on the behind of this listen. Okay, so this is the back view of listen. Okay, over here, you can see that there are actually two sets of power socket. Okay, so this power socket is used to power up your DUT and this power socket is used to power up your listen. So if you have a filter, just only one filter power supply, then you're supposed to reconnect the power supply to this DUT. Okay, because this will be the power source to power up your DUT, hence you actually prefer them to be filtered. While this socket here is mainly just to power up this listen, so hence, okay, whether is it filter or not filter, it is not so crucial. So in short, okay, this is basically what listen is about. So this is where the DUT get the power source. This is the power source that power up the listen. Okay, so this is the test setup okay, for conducted emission. Okay, for CISPR 22 and also for FCC standard, okay, they are mostly the same. Okay, so most of the standard, the key difference is the range of the testing frequency. Okay, so basically this is the key difference between all the different standards, CISPR 11, CISPR 22, FCC. Okay, the key difference is basically all of them, okay, they will have the upper limit of 30 megahertz. While for CISPR 22, okay, the start frequency to test will be at 150 kilohertz. While for FCC, the frequency to start to test will be at 450 kHz. And like what I mentioned earlier on, the upper frequency will be at 30 MHz. So this is the frequency range to test for conducted emission. Okay, let's take a look on the key setup for this conducted emission test. Okay, one thing I highlight earlier on, we need to have this vertical plane. Okay, so beside vertical plane, we also have the horizontal plane. Okay, according to the standard, okay, for the horizontal plane, okay, for CISPR 22 standard, the horizontal plane need to be at least 2 by 2 meter. Okay, for FCC standard, the horizontal plane need to be at least 2.5 meter 
by three meter. So this is the minimum size in order to comply for FCC standard. So over here you can see that we actually comply to the standard. In fact, it is even larger than 2.5 multiplied by 3 meter, which also comply the FCC and also the CISPR standard. Okay, so basically this is on the ground plane. Let's come to the non-conductive table. So the non-conductive table, the height should be around 0.8 meter. Okay, so the table, you can see that they are actually separate. Okay, uh, for Europe, okay, you need to separate at least 0.4 meter. Okay, but for SEC, okay, the separation required to be at least one meter. So this setup we actually compile to CISPR 22, okay, which means that the vertical plane and the non-conductive table they are actually separate by at least 0.4 meter. Okay, let's go into the detailed setup of the setup for this conductor emission. So you can see that my laptop is actually the device under test. Okay, so you can see that my laptop requires a power, so therefore you can see that my power is actually powered up the DUT. And you can see that basically they obtain the power from the listen. Okay, so in short, the listen actually will provide the power to power up my laptop. And over here, you can see that on the other end, you can see that basically this is the so-called portion that will be connected to either spectrum analyzer or EMI receiver. Okay, so let's do the testing. This is the setup to perform test and measurement for conducted emission. Okay, for example, there are various template. For example, for this time round, let's say we are doing CISPR 11. So therefore, I will choose to open the CISPR 11 standard. So over here, you can actually see two lines, one in red, one in so-called purple. So those that are in red, they are actually the limit line, which means that the function is actually done as a pitch search. The purple line is actually a average. So basically from here, you can see that this pit line okay, will be done by spectrum analyzer. This purple line okay, will be detail scan, which is going to be conducted by EMI receiver. Okay, so once we have set up all this, we are ready to do the test by pressing this button to start the conducted emission test. Okay, so from here you can see that all the test and measurement is done. So basically now I need to set the listen to end. Okay, so let's take a look on the listen view. Okay, so you can see that this is actually the RF output. Okay, so the RF output is connected to both the spectrum analyzer and, and EMI receiver. Okay, so basically you can see that I actually need to toggle between the live and neutral. As I showed you earlier on, okay, the system test and measurement actually requests us to set to neutral. So therefore, I just need to press this neutral to ensure that the light actually appeared at neutral. So after that, we are ready to execute the next test. Okay, so firstly, initially, we always need to do the noise floor measurement, okay, which means that the listen is not connected to any DOT. So basically, this is the noise floor. Okay, from here, you can see that there are actually two colors, the green and the red. The green is for the neutral and the red is for the light. So basically, this will ensure that okay, the quality of the measurement will be good as this indicates the noise floor of the listen without any DUT connector. Okay, so over here you can see that this is the view of a spectrum analyzer. So basically in short, this is actually the noise floor okay, when the listen without any connected DUT. So now we are ready to connect to the DUT into the listen. So let me quickly connect the DUT to the listen. And after that, I actually will execute the test and measurement instruction for conducted emission. So once we've done this, okay, I'm ready to show the data. So from here you can see that the data actually, so basically the system actually requests us to do the neutral, okay, but I'm not going to show the light, but we will be the same as the light. So over here you can see that they are doing a pitch search. You can see that they actually do the pitch search from the range of 150 kilohertz all the way to 30 megahertz. Okay, so basically this, will be all done by spectrum analyzer. Okay, they will measure all the pitch search and finally they will conclude okay, the test and measurement for conducted emission from the relevant 30 all the way to 30 megahertz.
150 kilowatts to 30 megahertz. So now I need to switch to line one, okay, which I will switch to line one, and they will do all the measurement, and then from there we will see the conclusion, okay, whether the DOT will pass or fail the test and measurement. Okay, so let's give it a while. Okay, so this is for the line. Okay, so I have done the neutral. So basically now this is doing the pit search for the line. Okay, so all the test and measurement done. Okay, let's take a look on the PC view. Okay, so you can see that the pit search is done. So over here again, you can see that there are actually two set of so-called uh, measurement. Okay, one is for neutral, which is in green, and the light is all in red. So over here, you can see that some of the point is actually quite near to the limit line. So hence, we probably need to send them to do the suspect. Okay, so basically we create this suspect and over here you can see that quite a fair bit of frequency are not able to pass the test. So all these tests we need to do a detailed scan in order to quantify whether this DOT can pass or cannot pass this CISPR 11 conducted emission test. Okay, so now we are ready to do the uh, so-called the, the PIP the final evaluation. Okay, let me give let me give you some time. Let me go to the neutral first. So the system actually asked me to switch to neutral. So I switch to neutral and then I need to do the average, okay, which is the final evaluation. So from here, okay, they basically will do the average as you can see from here. So based on the average result, okay, we can conclude whether the DUT pass or fail the test. So the measurement started. Okay, it will take some time okay, because they are compute all the average okay, as you can see uh, on the lower part on the EMI receiver okay, you can see that they are actually measure the quartzite peak and also the average okay, so from here okay, after that they will generate the output and then again from here we will determine whether it pass or fail the test so basically we have done the first neutral and they are doing a fine tune and then after this they will go to the second measurement okay so this is the first measurement okay i think they are pretty close to finish it okay so this thing will repeat okay it's a little bit meaningless to show you all the tests but over here okay i have shown it to you basically this one of the tests they are doing the average okay in order to quantify whether you can pass this CISPR 11 conducted emission test Okay, so over here you can see that we have finished all the final evaluation. Okay, so let me show this full window so that everything will be clear. So what we need to know is basically this two margin okay, for quasi peak and average. Okay, if it's a positive number means that the DUT actually passed. The bigger the number, the more confident that you know that this DUT actually passed the standard. So in short, over here you can see that the DUT actually passed all the different frequency. Okay, you can see from here, the quasi and also the average, they pass all the tests. So with this, I conclude that this DUT actually passed this CISPR 11 conducted emission test. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Thank you.